Hi everyone, so this is the video for the study guide. If you watch this, you should hopefully have a lot of success tomorrow on our quiz. So for this problem number two, I'm going to do two of these problems and then the rest you'll just have to look at the answers on for when I post the study guide. But what you're doing right here, you need to determine if the function includes a point six comma negative three. Remember our coordinates are x comma y. So what I have to do, I have to substitute into that equation that I have. So negative three equals negative three times my x value, which is six plus six. So then I have negative three. I don't do anything to that left-hand side. And then I have to simplify the right side. I know that negative three times six is negative 18 plus six, negative three equals negative 12. I know that's false. So it's not, the function is not, in, the point is not included in that function. Or the option on Desmos is no. Let's try another one. Let's see right here. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Okay. Let's do number five. I'm gonna do the same thing for six and three. I know from before, six is my x value, negative three is my y value. So I'm gonna say negative three equals two times six minus 15. I'm substituting in for the variables there. So negative three equals two times six minus 15. So I don't do anything to that negative three equals two times six is 12, 12 minus 15. Let's see, negative three equals 12 minus 15 gets me negative three. So negative three equals negative three. That's a true statement. So on the Desmos, you would write yes, or we know that the points on the function. So the other two, you'll have to look at the answer key to see what they are, but you're gonna do the same exact thing. Plug the point in, solve. If you got something true, it's on the function. If it's false, it's not. Let's see right here. Use the graph for the following equations. Are the hours of sunlight a function of the days of the year? So if we look right here, this is our days and this is our hours. So that would be saying that hours would be our output and days are input. Does the hours of sunlight depend on the day? Let's look. I'm gonna draw a vertical line at a bunch of different places. My vertical line only hits my function each time I draw it once. So I know that yes, it is a function. So yes, this would be a function. It passes a vertical line test. Every input has only one output. For what days of the year is the number of hours of sunlight increasing? Well, that's when my line goes up, up, up. So starting here to the top, right about here, my line's going up, up, up. That would be about, if we're estimating, maybe 170. So from zero to 170 days, sunlight is increasing. Let's see, decreasing, we're gonna do the opposite. So probably from 170 days to 365 days, we're decreasing. The day that has the greatest number of hours of sunlight would be the day where we have the most sunlight. That's the top of that graph. That would probably be at around 170. I have to look about here, I go down here and that would be about 170 on my x-axis. And that has about 18 hours of light. Let's look down below. Use a table for the following information. The table at the left shows Kieran's money earned for selling video games. Kieran also gets paid, paid a flat rate for working each day, which is included in the money earned. Mark the following statement as true or false. So let's dissect this table a little bit before we even answer any of the questions. I know that when I'm adding two games, I'm earning $10 because to go from three to five, adding two games, 
I go from 35 to 45, so I'm adding $10. So that would tell me if I earn $10 in two games, that I would earn $5 for every one game. All right. So then let's see, let's add some values to my table. Two games, I would have to do 35 minus five, I would get 30. One game would be 25 sold. And zero games, I would get $20, or Kieran would get $20. So let's see, 11, Kieran makes $10 per video game sold. That's false, we just figured out that he makes $5 for every one game. Number 12, Kieran makes $5 per every video game sold. That's true. We just found that out by looking at our table. Kieran gets a flat fee of $10 per day of work. When we're looking at that flat fee, that's like our initial amount at zero hours. We know that at zero hours from our table, we had earned $20 already. So we know that's false. Kieran gets a flat rate fee of $20 per day of work. That's true. Fabulous. All right, let's look. May hiked up a trail for 40 minutes. The graph shows the elevation and feet that she reached throughout her hike. Name a time period where May gained the elevation at the fastest rate. So if we look right here, we're looking for when did May gain the most amount of elevation in the shortest amount of time? Remember what we talked about. The steeper our line is, the faster the rate is, or the more the rate is. So let's see, this line right here is not that steep. The steepest part of our line is starting here and going all the way up to this point right here. That's the steepest part of our graph. If we wanna know the, the time period, I wanna know when it starts and when it ends. If I go down, 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 I know it starts at 22 minutes and it goes to 26 minutes. What was her fastest speed in feet per minute? Well, let's look, I need to find the slope or the rate of change. Remember, I look at my segment, I have to write my coordinates, and then I find the slope. All right, that's 22 comma 100, and then that's 26 comma, let's see, maybe 160. All right, let's find that slope. I'm gonna start at my bottom point. I need to find my change in elevation first. So I went up, up, up. She went from 100 to 160. So that's a change of 60. And our elevation going, our change in time, we went from 22 minutes to 26. Well, that's only four minutes. So my rise over my run, take 30 seconds. Think if you could come up with that rise over my run. I'm going to say it's 60 over 4, which also simplifies to 15 feet per minute. I just do 60 divided by 4. All right, this was 22 to 26 minutes. Just want to make that clear so we know. All right, 16, a tree planted today has a height of 5 feet and grows 1 foot per month. Make a table or a graph that models this growth pattern. So our tree right here. If this was our months and this is our height, at zero months, we our tree starts out, it's five feet tall. One month. Well, it says it grows one foot each month. So what's five plus one? That's six. Two months, what's six plus one? That's seven. Three months, that's seven plus one. That's eight. That's if I were to have it in a table. If I put it in a graph, zero, one, two, three, four. This is five, 10, 15, 20. This is the world's tiniest graph. But if I make this a little bit bigger, at zero, it's gonna be at five. At one, it would be at six, then seven, then eight, then nine. And I would go like that. All right. Is the height of the tree a function of the number of months? Well, this is my months. This is my height. This is the output. Remember, the output's a function of the input. 
That's that line that I have right here. Does it pass the vertical line test? Yes, it does. If I draw one line through it, it only hits at one point. So yes, every input matches to one output. Is the tree growth linear? Did that make a straight line? Yes, it did. Yes. And we know there's a constant rate of change. Whoops, that's the wrong form of there. There is a constant rate of change. The tree doesn't grow one foot one month and two feet the next month. It's always growing one foot. Next slide, fill out the table and sketch the graph of showing Simon's total distance traveled as a function of time based on the following scenario. All right, so let's look right here. Simon's walking, he's traveling, and he starts at home. So I'm going to say that my variable for my independent variable, or my input's going to be time. So T for time, my label's going to be time in, let's see, maybe minutes. My variable for my dependent variable, that's going to be my distance. So I would probably put D. And I'm going to say it's distance from home. If I look right here, I have one, probably two, three, four, Five. There's going to be about five parts to my graph. All right, so let's look right here. Simon starts walking to the store, gets halfway, and has to turn around and run home for his wallet. So he's walking to the store. He starts out at home. This is my distance from home. This is my time. And we just sketch. We need to think, okay, he's walking. He's walking slow, so my line's not going to be that steep. Uh-oh, he gets halfway and has to turn around and run home for his wallet, so his distance from home is going to start decreasing. But he's running home, so he's going to move a little quicker. He spends some time at home looking for his wallet, so his distance from home doesn't change. He starts walking to the store again. On his way, he stops to talk to a friend for a short time, so he's walking to the store. He's walking again. Uh-oh, he meets up with his friend, so now his distance isn't changing because they stopped. Then he sprints the rest of the way when he realizes he is running late. Let's say he's sprinting the rest of the way to the store. He's speedy quick, and he's finished at the store right here. That's where our story ends. So some of those had a little multiple parts. We have one part here into our graph, two, three, fourth piece, fifth piece, sixth piece. Because if we look right here, we have two different things that are happening here. So technically, that was an additional problem. So let's look. Number one, he's walking to the store. He gets halfway and has to turn around and walk home for his wallet. Two, he travels home. He decreases his distance. Number three, he's spending some time at home. Number four, that line right there, that piece, he's walking back to the store. Five, his distance isn't changing because he's talking in to a friend. He stops. His distance does not change. His time keeps increasing, though. And then he's sprinting because he realizes he's running late. All right. Fabulous. Remember, the parts of your story need to patch, match up to how many parts you have in your piecewise function. All right, Metropolis Zeus recently celebrated the birth of two new panda cubs, Mochi and Kappa. The table represents Mochi's weight over the first few weeks. How much does Mochi weigh when she was born? Well, at zero weeks, it says that she weighs 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 would be, I think it doesn't say, I'm going to say 0 0.5, let's say it's pounds. I guess pandas are very uh, small when they're born. How much does mochi gain each week? Let's look. This has from 0 to 1, so plus 1. That helps us find our unit rate. 
Let's look right here. 0 0.5 to 5.5, that's plus 5. So in one week, we gained 5 pounds. Write an equation that represents Mochi's weight. Let's think, what's our rate of change and what's our starting initial amount? Remember, y equals our total rate, total weight. Then we have our initial amount, 5, plus our rate times our variable. Or you could write y equals your rate times the variable plus the initial amount. Those two would be correct. Slide 19, this graph represents Kappa's weight. How much did Kappa weigh when she was born? Let's look at zero weeks. That looks like she weighed two pounds. How much did Kappa gain each week? Let's look, we need to figure out at one, we have right here zero comma two. At one, our point is one comma 4.5 it looks like. Oh no, that's actually five, my mistake. Because if this every, this is zero, two, four, six. So halfway between four and six would be five. Whoops. All right. So to go from zero weeks to one week, they went from two pounds to five pounds. So that would be three pounds each week. Let's look right here. Y would equal our rate, which was three times X plus our starting amount, which is our y-intercept, or whatever our x value of 0 is. Or you could say y equals, let's see, 2 plus 3x. They mean the same thing. Will Mochi and Kappa ever weigh the same amount in the same week? Let's see right here. We can use what we knew from last unit. And we can set those equal to one another. So 3x plus 2 equals, let's go back to our last slide, 5 plus 0.5x. All right, let's see. I'm going to get all my variables to one side. Whoops. All my variables to one side. So I'm going to subtract 0.5x from both sides. All right, 3x minus 0.5x gives me 2.5x plus 2 equals 5. This cancels out. Remember, you always do the opposite. I was adding 0.5x to both sides. I was adding 0.5x here, so I need to subtract it from both sides to get rid of it on that side. Now I need to get my constant away on this left side. It's a plus 2, so I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to subtract 2, so I have 2.5x equals 3. Now, my next thing that I need to do is I need to divide both sides by 2.5. Divide both sides by 2.5. x equals 1.2. So at 1.2 weeks, they'll equal, they'll be the same weight. All right, please let me know if you have any questions. What I will do, if you have gotten to the end of this and you've listened and you comment the word sprinkles on the study guide, I will give you two extra bonus points on the test. So if you write the word sprinkles on our study guide in the comments, you will get two points extra on the test. All right. Let me know if you have any questions. I hope you do well tomorrow. I think if you listen to this video, you'll do fantastic. Good luck studying.